I've been on a streak of playing some of the older Pokemon games lately. It started with wanting to finally beat Pokemon Coliseum, and it ended up with me replaying Emerald, Gale of Darkness, Battle Revolution, Platinum, and Heart Gold. And as I was replaying these games, I realized something. I was having fun. And I don't think it was just nostalgia, as I first played Emerald not too long ago, and I don't have much memory of most of these games in general. Let's go over some of the things I noticed while playing these games. The first thing I noticed was the difficulty. Now, for the most part, these are definitely still Baby's first RPG, but they have more teeth to them than the newer games. The old thing about Pokemon games is that all you need to do is power level your starter, but if the three games I did that in as a kid, I could only beat the one that had double paddles, so I'm not too sure how accurate that is. But even with the knowledge of how to play these games, they could fight back at times. Fantina, Whitney, and Norman were all tougher than any gym leader I can remember from Unova, Kalos, or Galar. And the champions of Emerald and Platinum, as well as the final boss of Colosseum, actually wiped me a few times. Furthermore, the difficulty in these games wasn't always a good thing, or even fair. Platinum had a lot of double team spam all the way up to the Elite Four, which sounds pretty bad until you look at Emerald, where even the champion had a Pokemon with double team. There were also a lot of Bronzor in Platinum, which always seemed to land their confused rights and hypnosis. Speaking of champions, let's go back and focus on them for a bit. This is where I saw a big difference in design. In the earlier games, the champions had a clear level advantage over you, even if you grind. The idea was most likely that your superior tactics would allow you to overcome the massive obstacles and steps. Grievel isn't actually that hard, but the challenge comes from catching his seven Pokémon, four of which are legendaries, and all of which are packing moves that are super effective against your Pokémon. Wallace may have a team approaching level 60 compared to your level 50s, but they're all water types in a region surrounded by ocean, so you should be prepared for such a fight. Cynthia and Evice are just plain very difficult no matter what you do, but they're definitely not impossible. Let's compare that to the modern games. In Shield, I didn't do any grinding, except for the very beginning to get my starter in gear, and Leon was the only fight where the opponent even matched my levels. Leon wasn't a challenge to overcome, it was fighting somebody at my level, quite literally. There was also a lot more content in the older games. The big one fans love is the Battle Frontier. Now I've seen this myth going around that the Battle Frontier was some unapproachable hellscape that required perfect IVs and EVs to even approach, which in turn required the sage levels of patience and knowledge that you needed to breed Pokemon in the earlier gen, but this isn't true at all. While of writing this I haven't gotten any gold ranks, I found just getting the proper EVs, moves, and natures are enough to get you silver ranks with ease. The Battle Frontier could really shake up how battles went. Sometimes you were in a tournament instead of a standard fight, and sometimes you can even control your own Pokemon. I'm much more familiar with the Gen 4 Battle Frontier, so I'll focus more on that. While there are less facilities than there are in Hoenn, we don't have any of the lamer facilities that aren't fun to play. The tower and factory are back, and the arcade and hall are really fun. The, the castle exists too, I guess. Generation 5 might have been the end of the Battle Frontiers, but at least it brought some new ideas of its home. A lot of people talk about the Pokemon World Tournament, but when I went through the games my first time, I was more drawn to the Unova Challenge. A common complaint about legendary and especially mythical Pokemon is that their power can't be used anywhere, since they're banned from pretty much every facility. With Black Tower and White Tree Hall, you can use quite literally any Pokemon you want, and the challenge is appropriate for such a lack of restrictions. At the very worst, you'll be fighting Pokemon up to level 80 with competitive stats and items. Not only will you need your own strong Pokemon to take them on, they'll also need to be up there in levels, instead of just at level 50. The Pokemon World Tournament, by contrast, is a much more standard affair. You fight three trainers and get some BP at the end. The big catch of this is who these three trainers are. So long as you go through the right entranceway, you won't be fighting randomly generated trainers that are the norm for battle facilities, but rather you'll be going up against the gym leaders of the previous generations. Eventually, you can even go up against the champions of the past games. With their return come three mixed versions of each of their themes, which is a nice touch as well. They kind of bring this back with the Lilith Battle Tree, and there were hints in the Isle of Armor that Crown Tundra would bring something like this, but that ended up not happening. I also think the games used to look better than they do nowadays. And I'm not just talking about the Battle Revolution footage I'm using for this video, I'm talking about the DS games looking better than the Switch games. In my opinion, the reason for this comes from the jump to 3D. This was one of the worst mistakes Pokemon ever made in my eyes because there's a lot less that can be left to the imagination when a game goes from 2D to 3D. When you fight in a vacant void for the first five generations, there's not a problem. But in Sword and Shield, when you fight in a vacant void inside a building, there's a huge problem. It's a bit hard to put the words into how to describe it, but there are just some things 2D games can get away with that 3D games can't, and it seems that the Game Freak hasn't picked up on this. 
The models that are used today are also a lot less interesting to look at compared to the ones from Genius Sonori. There's the famous example of Blastoise no longer using his cannons, but replaying the older console titles made it a bit disappointing to go back to the modern 3D games. To be fair, some of these models are really bad, even in Battle Revolution. What they did to Ampharos was an absolute atrocity, but there are quite a few models that look better than the ones we have today. Pokemon like Zatu, Skarmory, and Salamence no longer hover in the air awkwardly. And Pokemon like Pidgeot and Yama don't just stay in one place in the air and actually move around. What's more, big Pokemon are actually huge in the older 3D games such as poor Waylord, who in the modern games has sadly shrunken down to be smaller than the player. While the sprite-based games didn't have much detail in this department, they were also 2D, and once again, there are things 2D games can get away with that 3D games can't. Overall, I think there's definitely been a drop in quality from Generation 3 to 5 compared to the more modern games. I don't think it's a completely hopeless situation though. The DLC for Pokemon Sword and Shield was a huge step up compared to the base game. Mustard and Calyrex were pretty interesting characters, they finally brought back Pokemon following you, and the new areas were a lot more interesting to explore than the wild area. The rumors floating around point to the next games being either Let's Go Johto or a Sinnoh remake. Both of these possibilities scare me, as I'm pretty sure there's no way Game Freak can even attempt to come close to Platinum or Heart Gold and Soul Silver again. But maybe we're approaching a turning point, and the Switch will be the second Golden Age of Pokemon. After all, Diamond and Pearl are genuinely agreed to be some of the worst Pokemon games, while the games following it on the same system are generally seen as the best. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like as well as a comment to help boost the engagement. If you're enjoying all my videos, consider subscribing. I'm getting back into YouTube after a while, so I'm not sure what my next thing will be, but hopefully it will be something good.